this next person is an old friend. We've worked together in anti-war causes for a long time. I've, I've said for a long time now that, you know, you know, the problem in this country is the Pentagon's so greedy they have an extra side on their building. So, yeah, that joke lost a little pop lately, but uh, <laughs> not my fault. She's an associate professor of the Boston University School of Law, teaching Im immigration and refugee law. And she's advocated and represented refugees from all over the world for 20 years. And she's a great spokesperson at this time. We really need her voice. So please welcome Professor Susan Ecker. The recipe, we are told, will be delicious for true patriots, unpal unpalatable for those who are not. The main ingredients in the Patriot Act are shredded cores of the U.S. Constitution, well blended with huge portions of undiluted law enforcement and intelligence powers, mixed together with rare pinches of judicial review. And it must all be eaten with the right attitude and unquestioning belief that security requires eliminating our civil rights and liberties. As any good cookbook will tell you, carefully read the recipe first. The name should be your first indication of whether this will be edible or not. The USA Patriot Act or the uniting and strengthening by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism, it's hard for me to say it, follows a long line of similarly entitled laws and policies that we have been told will fight terrorism, heighten our security, and rid our shores of those undesirable people who look like and therefore must be terrorists. The Alien and Sedition Acts of the 1790s, the 1940s security legislation ordering internment of Japanese Americans, the 1950s House Un-American Committee activities, the 60s and 70s COINTELPRO investigations, the 90s Alien Terrorist and Effective Death Penalty Act. I'd still like someone to tell me what an ineffective death penalty is. Um, all, of course, ridding us of or silencing such undesirables as communists, socialists, anti-Vietnam War and U.S. Central America policy protesters, black activists, individual activists for such causes as Earth First, Palestinian rights, equal rights for women, and even Martin Luther King. The next order of business is to check that you have all the ingredients. Carefully assemble the following core amendments to the Constitution. The First Amendment. The First Amendment, which guarantees freedom of speech and expression, religion, the right to associate and to petition the government for redress of grievances, must be shredded at least three times. The Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment, which protects the right to be secure in one's home, protects privacy rights, and ensures fundamental guarantees against unreasonable searches and seizures without probable cause and without carefully defined warrants issued by the, court, by the courts must be shredded to a pulp. The Fifth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment which guarantees due process before any deprivation of life, liberty, or property must be shredded at least six times. The Sixth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment which ensures the right to speedy trial and the right to counsel must also be shredded to a pulp. Follow the directions carefully. The Act gives these to us. On wiretapping and intelligence surveillance, there are two themes in this Act. First, 
the minimizing of judicial review to ensure that law enforcement wiretapping is conducted legally and with proper justification, and second, permitting the use of intelligence investigative authority to bypass normal criminal procedures that protect our privacy. The main provisions on wiretapping in this act allow the government to use intelligence gathering powers to totally circumvent the standards for criminal wiretaps. Intelligence surveillance now only needs to have a significant purpose related to criminal investigation, not a primary purpose. It authorizes unconstitutional physical searches and wiretaps. Though searching primarily for evidence of a crime, law enforcement can now conduct a search without probable cause of a crime. The act extends a very low threshold of proof for access to internet communication. Law enforcement must now simply certify to a judge, who by the way has to grant the order, there's no discretion involved, that the information to be obtained is relevant to an ongoing criminal investigation. There's a very low level of proof required, less even than probable cause. In fact, it allows law enforcement to determine what websites the person has visited. On criminal justice, the Act expands the use of secret searches. Under prior law, a person is notified when law enforcement conducts a search. The Act now allows the government to request secret searches in any criminal case. It goes far beyond what is necessary to conduct terrorism investigations. It allows the broad sharing of very sensitive information in criminal uh, investigations with intelligence agencies, including the CIA, the NSA, the Secret Service, and the INS. It permits the sharing of sensitive grand jury and wiretap information without judicial review or any safeguards regarding the future use of such information. It puts the CIA back in the business of spying on Americans. Already there is a new uh, regulation proposed that allows uh, law enforcement to eavesdrop on confidential attorney-client communications when people are being held in detention. And the last, but I hope for many of you, just as important provisions affecting non-citizens in this country, the immigrant and terrorist provisions. The Act amends the definition of terrorist activity to cover use of a weapon or other dangerous device to cause substantial damage to property. This is a terrorism definition. Groups such as the WTO protesters or Vieques protesters who throw a rock in a demonstration will be deemed engaging in terrorist activity and subject to designation as terrorist organizations. It creates a new provision that permits the Secretary of State to designate foreign and domestic groups, terrorist organizations, without any due process safeguards whatsoever. Any group with a member that has ever been involved in violence can be designated a terrorist organization, and any members of such a group would be inadmissible or deportable and U.S. citizens subject to prosecution. Paying dues to such an organization will be ground for inadmission, deportation, and for U.S. citizens' prosecution. Finally, the Act for the first time permits indefinite detention of immigrants. An immigrant who is certified by the Attorney General as an alien whom the Attorney General has reasonable grounds to believe has engaged in terrorist activity, and we know from past experience, that a terrorist is whoever the government says a terrorist is. Or in any other activity that endangers national security will be subject to mandatory indefinite detention. The authority to detain indefinitely prevails even if an alien is eligible for underlying immigration relief and even if he has won his claim to relief as long as the Attorney General makes this certification there will be no judicial review of these determinations. If this recipe is palatable so far, you need not hear more. However, like the government excesses of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the government recipe of 2001 is guaranteed to those of us who find this unpalatable more than a stomachache. 
What happened on September 11th was horrible and shocking. But we must remember that this was not the first threat to America's security and its history. And we need to keep three important principles in mind in assessing the government's response here at home. The first is to learn lessons from responses of the past and not permit overbroad laws or policies in reaction to this latest crisis. The second is to not permit the sweeping away of the foundations of our constitutional rights, particularly political speech and freedoms, and equal protection in response to critical times. Constitutional rights reflect the strength of democracy in difficult times, not in easy times. The third is not to buy ourselves perceived security by selling out the rights and liberties of the most vulnerable members of our community. Arabs and Muslims, particularly Arab and Muslim non-citizens in our society, by now, it should be clear, this is not a recipe for a patriot, unless a patriot in 2001 must accept a recipe that's, that stifles free speech, association, privacy, and an independent judiciary. This is not a recipe against terrorism, as Congress has explained, has not explained how this act gives the government powers it did not already have to fully investigate, locate, charge, and convict terrorists. This is a recipe for tyranny. And as Edmund Burke said, bad laws are the worst sort of tyranny. So let's not shred the Constitution. Let's protest against this act. Let's have a clear Green Party stance against its, against its worst provisions. Let us work. Let us work to, reveal, to repeal it. There is clearly no leadership in Congress. Only one senator voted against this bill. And it passed with virtually no debate. We need to provide that debate. We need to educate ourselves and others to stand against it and not accept the premise that we must shred the Constitution to fight terrorism. Thank you.